Bowling.com Road to Finals. Johnson McEwen, Stephanie Johnson, and Kelly Kulik for huge names in women's bowling. Going ahead to end today. Kathy is joined now by Danielle McEwen. Danielle, it was your first year on tour. This is your fourth TV show. You're still looking for your first win. But what have you learned from this experience? I learned so much throughout this whole year. Um, this is the first time that I've ever bowled 10 weekends in a row, even including college bowling and everything. So it took a lot to figure out how to keep my game sharp in the little downtime that we had. And even mentally to come back into the next weekend fully ready to go was a big learning exper experience throughout the year. But well worth it. Yes, definitely. Good luck tonight. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Danielle, a lot of experience here at the Team USA Training Center in Arlington. Time out for our future for the sport lane pattern. Carolyn, what do you see here? Look at this pattern, 37 feet. I believe it was 28 milliliters, which is a lot of volume. But look at this pattern, how flat it played, which allowed the girls to have a few different angles. But here was the key. Each pair played differently. Five and six, which we are not using, forced them a little bit further left because of topography of the lane, which is about right here, okay? And seven and eight, the lanes they're on, they are on now played way further to the right and did not break down as dramatically as five and six. So it's gonna be interesting to see if they stay in that part of the lane. Both made the show. Of course, Liz won last week in New Jersey at the US Open on a 39-foot, very challenging pattern. Scores were very low. We expect more strikes today and higher scores. I was very glad to see that we were bowling on 7-8 because I think 5-6 and six did break down and became a little tougher. 7-8 and eight definitely was more high scoring. Liz Johnson gets us going. Four pin stands for Liz. Trying to wrap up a spectacular season. And the return of the PWBA Tour. Triple crown possibilities. Just outside Buffalo, and November 4th, she just told us she'll be inducted into the Buffalo Sports Hall of Fame. Such a big deal. Congrats to Liz for that. Great shot by Liz, for pin. And you know, I don't, by all means, I'm not picking someone who's going to win or who's a favorite because they, all players play the lanes the correct way, and that's why they're on the TV show. But when you do play further to the right, you can't ever count Liz Johnson out. Here's the youngster, Danielle McEwen. High flush, perfect strike. 10 down to the pit in the one free pocket for Danielle, the five seed from just outside West Point, Stony Point. This is a great first shot by Danielle. She's going, crossing eight at the arrows, getting it out to about five down the lane, and that's basically where this pair played throughout the matches. And she's using the same ball she used. She's using a menace, stronger ball, little less surface so that it clears that front part of the lane easily but still gives her the back end reaction smooth that she's looking for four years team usa and a former star at fairly dickinson in new jersey two great shots already better striking than we had last week on that challenging pattern in north brunswick at the u.s open these are the two girls you probably would like to see on the fresh pattern. Uh, it has, you know, it has not carried down as much yet. It's still pretty fresh, and and between Liz and Danielle, they will break down the pattern properly. Push. Avoids a split. The nine stands. Single pin conversion coming up. Pretty good shot. Now this is a good shot to look at because Liz missed a little bit left. She's playing the lanes identical to Danielle, maybe two boards to the right, but here she goes a little more right to left. Ball comes up a little high. She gets the break on the nine pin, but the key factor here is Liz will probably not move on the approach or the lane. She'll increase her ball speed to keep her angle straighter. Liz, of course, part of Bowling History PBA Tour. She became the first woman bowler to win a match on a PBA telecast. Defeating West Malott, 05, 10 years ago, outside Grand Rapids, Michigan. I had a call with Randy Peterson on that broadcast. It was incredible to be a part of bowling history to watch Liz knock off the big Texan, West Malott, on a show. And of course, she's followed that up with her amazing success. Oh. On the women's team. All right. And women's events, and there's a strike for Liz Johnson in the third. 
You can hear Liz yell hook, a little more direct. Ball comes in half pocket, but gets a little help there, knocking out the 10. Back to Danielle, two-time NCAA Bowl of the Year at Fairly Dickinson, and all 10 down for her. Perfect shot for McEwen, who's got a great look on both lanes. Danielle is so fundamentally sound. Right here, four-step approach, gets that ball into the swing so smooth. A Little bit of a higher backswing right here. See how high up, but look at her position, and look at this right here. That right there is picture perfect. Anybody who's looking to learn how to bowl with a four-step approach, Danielle McCune is the one to watch. And the key to her success today will be that smooth push, getting that ball down smooth, going through the process, and just keeping it focused on one thought. Four pin. Still a good shot. Another good shot by Danielle. Ball just coming up a little bit higher. You can see it picked up just a little bit sooner than it did on the last three shots. But she gets a break with the four pin, and you're going to see that today with this angle. You're going to see probably a lot of four pins, a lot of ring tens, if the lanes stay conducive to what they are now. There's the four. There's the mark looking for the front four for McEwen, who seems more comfortable at ease already in this match than she did last week in New Jersey. She was only about 70 miles from home. A lot of family and friends were there. Just mom, who saw them having breakfast today in the hotel lobby, is here with her today. She feels more comfortable. Liz oh. to cut the lead in half. What? Wow, powerful shot. And all 10 down for Liz Johnson. Another great shot to watch by Liz Johnson. Remember I said Liz will not move on the lane, but as you can see, this one was a little bit more in front of her and direct, which is what Liz likes to do. Ball gets down the lane, just that one, two feet longer down the lane, high flush. Liz will use, Liz will use her ball speed to her advantage. One of the Johnsons will win the player of the year, either Stephanie or Liz today. So we've got a lot on the line. Not the hit she wanted, and the 6-10 stand for Liz Johnson. You could hear it when she let it go. Again, this is like that other shot that was on the right lane. She misses going right to left just a little bit too much. Ball hooks up a little sooner. On this pattern, you will not have built-in hold. You will have to create that by your angle or by your ball speed. Liz will choose ball speed over angle. 6-10 covers. Liz told us before the match, so impressed with Danielle McEwen, the youngster, and former collegiate star at FTU. And Liz said, look, I've got to step up my game, continue to work hard. I can't rest on my laurels. I'm 41. I don't want these youngsters to catch me yet. I've got a lot of great bowling ahead. Yeah, God forbid she's 41. <laughs> but Danielle, one of the things you talked about how she looks, she is more comfortable and confident. She's had a few weeks to really process what she's gone through, and she is ready. Continues great shot making. Another strike. Four out of five frames she has struck. Host Adam Shine brings you his unmatched enthusiasm to a whole new level on his nightly show full of strong opinions and high energy. Time to shine Tuesday through Friday at 6 Eastern right here on CBS Sports Network, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Saw Adam this morning on Tops, that of the pregame show leading up to week one of the NFL. He's fun to watch. Well, we just found out that Danielle is using the same type of ball, but she's actually using two different drillings. So she's throwing one ball drilled one way on one lane and another ball drilled another way on the other lane, which is very interesting because she, I don't think she did that all weekend. But that just goes to show the experience that she's really paying attention to what she needs to do. Kat, thanks, and what an unbelievable start here for Danielle McEwen. Looking for first PWBA Tour title, first major, 
strikes again in the sixth. It's a battle with a legend, Liz Johnson. At the National Training Center for the USBC, Hall of Famer Liz Johnson works on a spare sixth frame, and it's going to be a big hill to climb against the youngster McEwen, who's got a great look. Good response for Liz when she did it most. Great shot by Liz, and, and one of the key factors here is, remember we talked about it last week, Dave, coming out of the commercial break, one of the hardest shots to throw because a lot of times you get a little bit slow, you're contemplating your thoughts. Perfect example of Liz with the experience, comes out, throws it hard, keeps it direct, great result. She had never made the Queens and US Open show in the same year, much less won them both. Looking for another major here to wrap up the return of the PWBA. What a season for Liz. Didn't like that, but got a break on a light hit. And a strike for Liz Johnson. Very unlike Liz Johnson, but you can see right at the foul line, she lost it off her hand. Ball goes way right outside of where that target is. I mean, she got the break. It, it barely hit the head pin and rolls the rolls the two pin. Great break to turn that into a double. McEwen to go up 22. Looks for the turkey. That looks off the mark, but hurries back as her adjustment on that lane gets into the one-three pocket for another strike. This is another great example of how this this pair played. The right lane is a little bit tighter, but because she's using a stronger drill and a strong ball, here, here is where they're trying to keep it. This is way right of the target, but that ball, because she's smooth, lets that ball roll, and look at it tickle the head pin, and she gets the light mixer. That was perfect. That right there shows you. That's when what people used to say, right ball, right area, don't move. 32, the look continues. Strike crest here for Danielle McEwen, who struggled with just three strikes in her match with Jazreel Tan last week and lost 172-165. What a difference we're seeing on the pattern here today in Arlington. And this, again, was the better pair in match play because the girls did break it down from right and then chased it just a little left, which allowed the scores to be a little higher. Liz can make no mistake from here on in. Strikes there. Down 22 pins as we head to the foundation frame. GoBowling.com, your nonstop portal to find local bowling centers. Get tips for the pros and for all the latest news and information about your favorite sport bowling, visit GoBowling.com for more. This is battle of sore left knee for several weeks. Going to get treatment, see a specialist when she gets back to Buffalo next week. Forgetting about that now. Chasing history. Had to hurry, leaves the double wood. 2 eight. Came in light again. Popped up a little bit with that. You could see she falls off to the right. Not one of her best best shots, and, and she knows it, because you can tell by Liz's body language. Got it a little bit right. Left the 2-8, makeable spare. Does cover, does convert for the mark. But she needs strikes at this point. McEwen has been red hot, the five seed. See her road throughout match play. Best out of five matches. Current Culkin and Shannon O'Keefe, finalist last week, was the top seed at the U.S. Open in New Jersey. Settled for runner-up honors for Liz Johnson. Still has the look. Another strike. This lane is very forgiving. Ball actually makes it up, I say makes it up the hump. She gets this one out to about three. But still, because she's so smooth at the point of release and she's got that 
Daniel, the funny thing about all the players, they all have that different axis rotation off their hand, and she's so clean that that ball reads the lane and is able to make it up to the head pin. Five bagger for Danielle. That's all she needs to shut out Liz on the bench and advance to the championship match. Six will do it. How about all ten down? Half a dozen in a row. Six bagger. And Liz Johnson is helpless and defeated by the youngster Danielle McEwen, only 24 years old, bidding for her first career title. She'll play in the championship match here today in Arlington. You and, and I, I saw it early, just speaking with Danielle in pre-match, Carolyn. I, I was going to say. She had that look. Yep. It's, uh, you know what I was going to say? Eye of the Tiger. Yeah. I mean, she doesn't know what that is, probably. <laughs> <laughs> you and I, I do, though. Know, yeah, I know that show. Anyway, so. uh, but as, as much as Liz is, I'm, you know, I'm sure very upset with herself, you know, because I know how Liz is, she has had an absolutely phenomenal year. This already is the highest game of the week for any bowler. We got 16 of the world's best starting off this tour championship. Ten pin there for McEwen. Oh, wow. Thanks. And Danielle will advance the championship match. Stephanie Johnson, Kelly Kulik await in the other semifinal today. Ten pin there for Liz, finishing out a tremendous season. One I think we'll all remember in women's bowling. Absolutely. I mean, she's just a phenomenal champion. She's a great representative for this sport. And you know, it, it is, you touched on one of the things too, is she's gonna be 41 years old. Great example of if you keep yourself in shape and keep up with the, you know, how the game changes, you can compete for years. Danielle McEwen to the championship match, trying to make history today at Arlington. Liz Johnson was hoping for that triple crown. Won't happen in 2015 for Liz, but a year to remember for women's bowling and for Liz Johnson. About to be inducted to the Buffalo Sports Hall of Fame. Stephanie Johnson head to head. Stephanie joined by Kathy. Stephanie, this is your fourth show, your first swing on the PWBA Tour, and yet tonight you were seated because of your great performance. You are also the only lady to make all nine match play finals. Did that exceed your expectations? Absolutely. You know, I think we all have high standards of ourselves, but it exceeded my expectations, and uh, I'm here to win. For Levi? Yes, absolutely. Good luck. Thank you. Young son is in the house here, Kat. Maybe in the back room, so <laughs> too much noise made with Dad, but it's great to have him here. Let's take a look at the GoBowling.com road to the finals. An impressive first match from McEwen. That's unbelievable. I'm telling you that 7-8 and eight was able to play so much better for the girls. And if you could stay further right and just ball up or ball down, depending on what you were looking for, the scores were pretty darn good. Second in points, rookie of the year, champ in Wichita on the women's tour, Stephanie Johnson. Starts her day in the semifinals. Two pin. No shock that Stephanie's trying to play further right. Another great outside player. Once again, same shot though. Got it a little bit further right than she intended to. On that lane seven, it does hook a little bit more and breaks down a little bit quicker than lane eight. So that almost like you want to call it your gutter should be the five six area. Second pin conversion. We'll keep a close eye on this oil pattern, how things break down and the players approach the path to the pocket. Now it's Kelly Kulik from Union, New Jersey. Tell us pre-match, a lot of pressure on her last week. She battled with Linda Barnes for the fifth and final spot in the U.S. Open TV field. She was just exhausted by show day, she said. Mentally and physically kind of worn down. Glad to make the show. Today, she's here to win. Great start. It's like to do that, baby. 60 feet to success for Kelly Kulik, blasting 10 down into the pit. Great shot by Kelly. 
talked to her before. A great five-step, but look how smooth she is into that push. High backswing, but look at her power step before she gets down. And right here, you will not see any pull down off of Kelly Kulik. She is smooth as silk into the lane. And here's going to be the key for Kelly. She's going to be a little bit further left, but still getting it out. Do you see that? To that 6-7 board. With a little bit of a stronger ball, she is going to be further left than these girls, but still playing them similar. Wow, great start. Good start. Finds that pocket perfectly. A little different path to the pocket, though, on each lane. It's always so interesting to watch how the players approach the differences between the TV players. And this is a great match to watch to see that, because with Kelly being just a little bit further left, something we keyed on last week, doesn't matter how you throw the ball. You can still use that same break point. It's just how you get to that break point through your game to make yourself successful. Really tough split here. Six, Ste seven, ten. Sorry about that, Dave. Stephanie, once again, that's one of those shots that Liz, she got a little more right to left. So what I mean by that is starting it way in front of her, but missed left. There is no hold buildup on this pattern because of it being a little bit flatter. Not only that, you notice nobody's playing in. So there's no oil being pushed around in that area. She's going to have to make the adjustment like Liz with ball speed. The cover cross lane almost got the seven, but it is an open for Stephanie Johnson. And on the bench, early edged Kelly Keel. Almost gets that ball to the right of that six pin and sliding it over into that seven, but just goes slightly behind it. Dave, this is something we talked about. Now, Stephanie did not bowl any matches. Liz Johnson did not bowl any matches. And I do think, I don't think they would admit it, but I do think not knowing how the lanes played and transitioned has a little bit of a, a fact as to the moves you make on the pair. Looks for the high flow strike and leaves the nine. And Liz and Stephanie both told us before the show today they felt mentally ready, of course, sharp. They had practiced, they had done some commentary, extra frame, but still not competing. All those best of five match play that can affect how you approach showdown. Absolutely, Kelly even said it. I talked to her yesterday. She said my moves were a little bit quicker by that second match than they were in the first match. And you only have 10 frames. So if you fall a frame behind, it could cost you. That's nine. And let's face it, practice, mental preparation is not the same as competing. No, it's not. Uh, you know, being mentally tough is gonna get you through those tough matches. Absolutely, I, I cannot agree with you know, what everybody says about that more, but actually throwing the shots on the pair and watching how your opponent breaks them down, what balls rolled good, what they did on the lane, it is going to give you that one or two frames ahead and could, you know, make the difference in winning the match. Uphill. Two pin up, try to avoid the double wood there, did that, a little off the mark looking for the pocket. That shot was almost just like Danielle McEwen's, got it way right outside of her target, but she barely hits the head pin, gets the break, and just leaves the two pin. So once again, that shows you that she's in that right part of the lane where when she misses just a little bit right, that ball is still trying to get to the head pin. Oh. Whips on it and misses the two. Stuck on the approach, we heard the reaction. As soon as she let this one go, you heard it. Pulled right up, I mean, you could see her whole body move right up. She sticks on the approach right there. She paid the penalty, missed it to the right. So Johnson opened the door with an open frame and Kelly returns the favor with her own open. After that striking the first two frames. You you rarely see that out of Kelly Kulik. So the, the sticking on approach obviously had something to do with it. But all of these girls, excellent spare shooters. How she responds here is the question. Pretty well. 
<laughs> one three pocket. And all ten back into the pit. Strikes on three of the first four frames for Kelly Hewlett. She only struck three times total in the loss to Jasmine Tan. Opening play last week at the U.S. Open in New Jersey. Only rolled a 190. Jazzy has 195 to 190 in Four pin on a good shot. So we talked about Liz Johnson hoping for player of the year. How about as we see this first here? She actually made the move on the lane. It looks like she's made just a little bit of a parallel move. Stephanie likes to keep the ball way in front of her. Four pin, great shot, great adjustment. They will not try to move off of that area too much. Like I said, they'll do with ball speed or they'll just change balls to keep them in that area. Spare conversion for Stephanie Johnson. Trying for player view. Match play appearances. The only player on tour to do that for all of the tour events this year. Did win in Wichita. And a runner-up finish as well at the Lubbock Sports Open in Texas. She's a hometown hero. Like yourself, Dallas Metroplex. Got to feel good to... Be so close to home. Had a barbecue last night yes. with family and friends. It's always nice to bowl in front of the hometown crowd. He's got a chance. Wow, way off. On a light hit, leaves the head pin. The one, two, eight stands. Not a good shot for Johnson. She did not like this shot off her hand. She missed way right. You'll see right here. See how it went left to right, got way out here, and that is not where they're trying to play. You're going to see how it's going to try to get there. It's the three pin right in the face, but she gets the break. Gets the 10 out of there. Makeable spare. Gets her mark at the midway point. Now that's one of those shots you could say from bowling in the matches. Kelly and Danielle know they have that little bit of area to the right on the right lane. Stephanie may not see that yet because she hasn't experienced a couple of matches to see what that ball would do missing right and missing left. Flush, hit, strike for Kelly Hewitt, forever etched in the minds of women's bowling everywhere. Her victory over Chris Barnes, the 2010 PBA TOC in Las Vegas, unforgettable, making history. The break of the four pin there, Chris Barnes. 10 pin, Kelly Hewitt stepped up and wrapped it up and had a TOC championship. And Chris Johnson, uh, Chris Johnson, listen to me, Chris Barnes, arguably one of the best ever put on a pair of bowling shoes. So that's Without a question. pretty darn awesome victory. Also from here in the Dallas area. Back to back checks for Kelly Hewitt. She's found her look after struggling earlier in this semifinal match. Danielle McEwen awaits the winner. Johnson, Hewitt, head to head, the semifinals from Arlington. Only one can make the title tilt. Kelly Kulik in great shape, head to head with Stephanie Johnson on this 37 foot pattern. So I wonder yes, how the ball is approaching the lane to And I'm going to master this. The ladies do not want to get the ball outside of that 6 7 board down lane. Kelly, even though Kelly is laying it down a little bit further left than Stephanie, Stephanie is definitely further right than Kelly. They don't want to get it outside of five because there's a little bit of hang down the lane. Now, if you're soft with it, the ball is trying to get up there, but it's not very forgiving. So they're almost using that 5-6 board as the gutter. They don't want to get it right of that board down lane.
Watts needs a big rally. Maybe it starts here. Yes, it does. Crunching 10 down into the pit, a perfect 1-3 pocket hit. I was just told by Rob Gottschall, the rep for Ebernight, that Stephanie made a ball change. She went to a little bit of a weaker ball with surface so that she can move a little bit further right, be a little bit more direct. And with that surface on the ball, it's going to still read that middle part of the lane that, like we're talking about, gets to that spot and still reads it to get to the head pin. 11-year member of Team USA, four years junior Team USA. Great experience. Wants a major here today. That's a look. Back to back, big strikes for Johnson to stay in the match. Those two shots right there are a great example of how I talked about this pattern. These girls are going to try to stay as far right as possible. So what did she do? She chose to go weaker with surface, move a little bit right so she could still keep that ball right in front of her, which is her comfort zone. Seventh frame for Kelly, goes for the four backer. Has it. And I know I key in on this all the time, but you know how I am about the old TV break, you know, with the commercial break. Great shots by the girls coming out, and I think that's such a, a, an asset to them. Another great shot by Kelly, gets it out to about eight. High flush, she's got that little bit. She's, once again, she uses it a stronger ball with less surface, but because of how she's attacking the lanes, she actually is creating herself a little bit of hold where she doesn't have to get it so far right. Looking to stay hot. Strive for five. Push. That comes in high and a baby split. With a 310 for Kelly Kulik. Misfires that time. Kelly misses way left here. Didn't even get the ball. It didn't project right off her hand at all. Almost goes Brooklyn. Gets a break, but leaves the 310. Covers nicely. Big spare pickup okay. for Kelly Kulik in the clutch. This is picture perfect. She uses her spare ball, hits to the right of that three pin, and it takes out the 10. Shot for Johnson. Kathy is joined by Diana Zabulova of Latvia. Diana, one of our overly accomplished international players, came over to the United States to join the PWBA and won one of our events. How is it bowling over here in our country? Um, it's awesome. I mean, the competition is unbelievable. So I love bowling against the best women in the world and being one of them. Is it a great opportunity for you to be here? Yes, absolutely. And you'll come back? Yeah. Good. Congratulations. Thank you. Kat, thanks. We look forward to seeing much more of Diana on tour. Beat Rocio Restrepo at the Minnesota Open. Speaking of international stars, she's from Columbia. 216-208 to win that title. Johnson needs it. Has it. Keeping things interesting late in the match. Very interesting shot by Stephanie. Let's watch this. Pulls up on it just a little bit. She wasn't sure, but once again, kept her angles really straight in front of her. Yes, missed a little left, but her ball speed allowed that ball to lay off in the right spot. Big strike foundation frame and a four bagger to cut it to a 13 pin lead for Kulik. Her ninth works on a spare. Wow, flush strike. Kelly Kulik blitzes the pins. For everybody that's at home watching, if you can hear Kelly, she's breathing a lot. 
that's key for Kelly. In talking with her, one of, one of her factors is I just want to keep myself calm, and I keep myself calm by breathing to make sure you don't, it relaxes your shoulders, really. And what's the key here? Your swing. Trying to relax, trying to stay focused. Comes in high. Three six up. We saw a moment definitely, definitely hooks more. the final. You heard Kelly say it. This lane definitely hooks more. It hooked more in the matches also, but again, like her other shot on this lane, she never got that ball to the right at all off her hand. No hole built up unless you're further right. Kelly is further left than Stephanie. So being left with Liz playing there and Danielle, Stephanie's got a little bit of hold right to left. Kelly does not. Got to cover this. Does. 3 6 down. Has a spare, but not striking there so late in the match is crucial. And it tightens things up even more. <laughs> Stephanie Johnson's going to have a chance. When she steps up in the 10th. Championship player of the year for Stephanie. Oh, yeah, there's a lot at stake here. Needed a double and four to win. Seven pin. what she needs. Stephanie has struck every time since she changed balls. So remember we were saying they're going to stay in that same area and make that ball change. Got to have this. Lay here on the seven. There's one. Cuts it to a two-pin deficit. One more strike and three, and she'll make the championship. Watch Stephanie right here. See how far right she does walk to the left a little bit, but still keeps that ball right in front of her and gets the light mixer. What a fantastic ball change by Stephanie Nation. Can never count anyone out. Johnson used to be Nation. <laughs> Married name. By the way, fantastic bowler. That's what she needs. Kelly can't watch on the bench. Gotta have it. You bet. Yeah. 60 feet to success. Big kill, big kill. For Stephanie Johnson Warshot to take the lead. Great shot by Stephanie. A little bit further left than that first shot in the 10th, but once again, we say with that ball speed, she keeps it right in front of her. High flush. She's got great reaction. She's got that little bit to the right and that little bit to the left. She will continue just keep that ball in front of her, increase her ball speed to allow her to play that line. Just needs three pins. She's got a victory over Kelly Kulik. And Stephanie Johnson from Grand Prairie, Texas, only 15 minutes from here in Arlington, will take on Danielle McEwen for the championship today here at the USBC National Training Center. Had a big deficit to come back from against the great Kelly Kulik and did it for a victory. Now she's in the finals. McEwen beat Liz Johnson, the legend, 278-224. And Stephanie Johnson, a late rally over Kelly Kulik, six-time major champion, by seven pins. Great to see John Harbuck, right, 10 Entertainment president here in Arlington at the USBC National Training Center. My first time in this great center. You live in the Metroplex. You're here a lot. Though. Oh, I'm yes. I'm really impressed with the facilities here. Absolutely. Actually, I, I want to say my last TV show was I made it here at the Queens. I did not know that. So, yeah. Did you win? 
I didn't. I finished second, but oh, thanks no. for bringing that up. But anyway, you brought it up. no, I'm kidding. Uh, but the great <laughs> facility because we're Team USA members, we're past Team USA members. You can come practice here, so it's awesome. Sure is. Johnson gets us started. Ten pin. Nudged, but stays up. Great start by Stephanie, leaving a flat 10, still hitting the 1-3. One, one thing that I've seen out of the girls, even when the lanes were tough, you know, keeping that ball in the 1-3 pocket, making the spare, that's what was really crucial the last few, few weeks. Now, of course, today we've seen some more strikes, which is nice, um, but still, same philosophy. Pit. Single pin, fair conversion for Stephanie Johnson, the two seed from Grand Prairie, Texas. Back to McEwen, she's had a break after winning over Liz Johnson in such impressive fashion. 279, 224. It's a great story Danielle told us last week at the US Open about how she found out that the PWBA tour was coming back. Look out, 7-10. Yikes. Not quite how you want to start your match, but it was a, a <laughs> I thought it was a great shot off her hand. She's moved a couple boards left of where she was playing that first match. Ball comes in light. Doesn't get the break and kicking out a seven, the seven or the 10. But it really was not a bad shot off her hand. Take the 10, and open frame, but it is early. Danielle told her she was practicing and checking her cell phone, and that's when she learned about the news. We're with the Smithfield PWBA Tour Championship at the Training and Research Center in Arlington. Great to have you with us, Dave, Carolyn, and Kathy. On board for the final event of this Tour Championship season. It's a major, so much at stake. She said she learned about it on Facebook, and she liked it, <laughs> and she shared it. Facebook blew up. Nice hit there. All ten into the pit. For a young bowler like that who didn't, of course, get to compete the first time the tour was around when you were so dominant winning your 20 titles, it meant so much. Oh my God, absolutely. And that was another, another great shot by Danielle. Gets the trip four. You need a little bit break, but great recovery after that bad break in the first frame, 7-10. We'll see how she can capitalize on it. Stephanie told us she learned about the resurgence, the return of the tour on Twitter. And she was so emotional. A chance to compete again professionally. Great shot. The Men's US Open is back. It's on CBS Sports Network. The PBA's best compete in one of the major events on tour. Be sure to join us Sunday, November 8th, 1 Eastern from the AMF Garland Lanes for the Baltimore AMF US Open. Sean Rash, Tommy Jones, the best in the business on the men's side. And of course, PDW, Pete Weber, the Hall of Famer himself. Past champ since 2000. Pete's got three. Norm Duke from just outside of Orlando. Got a couple. Johnson, oh, that just did not read properly. Way right of target. And the one, two up, that almost went into the channel. We're gonna look at this and I'm gonna way over here. She gets it way, way out there to that one, two board. And once again, that shows you it's that left to right. Stephanie's more right to left. And Ball just never had time to recover. Does cover. After the miss on her first attempt. McEwen has had a great look all day. What do you think a youngster like that, only 24 years old, what does she do in between matches knowing she's in the final? How do you get mentally prepared? Well, I talked to her a little bit uh, yesterday, and one of the things she said she was keying on was, gee, I haven't won yet. What have I done on TV that wasn't right? And she said that today and late last night, she focused on, you know what? 
Tomorrow's a new day. It's a new tournament. I'm going to key in on the factor that I am mentally ready. I have been aggressive, and I just have to go through the process. And I, I looked at her, and I went, really? I mean, I'd be a nervous wreck. But she did. She dwelled on it just a little bit, but turned it right around last night and this morning and said, you know what? It's all about today. And so far, it has been. Ten strikes in the first match over the top seed, Liz Johnson. Topeka open, runner-up, her best finish thus far. That could all change the day. Fourth frame. Not a perfect shot. Crunching into the one-three pocket again for McEwen. Each lane, she is locked in. He's got a great look. Smooth off her hand. Look at that foundation, that solid foundation at the foul line. Great reaction. For now, she's bowling like the season veteran. Kulik and Liz Johnson already eliminated. A couple legends. I'm learning from them. They inspire, really? yeah, they inspire me. They really do. Fourth frame for Johnson. You bet. Perfect shot. Even though this is the last stop on the PWBA Tour, the regional program still in progress. September 27th, the Southwest region is at Stomble, Texas. The Midwest is at Liberty Lanes in Carpentersville, Illinois. The following week from October 2nd through the 4th, the East region has a tournament in Cornell, New York, upstate. For more information on the PWBA regional events, please log on to pba.com for more. Said at the foul line, online, right? What are we talking about? If she keeps that ball right in front of her, and you can see this ball right, that is straight, straight towards her target, and that is her best look. It's when she goes left to right, that ball just doesn't read the pattern. Midway point. Gets help on the 10. It's a big strike for McEwen. That one right there is a payback for that 7-10 in the first frame. Look at this. She thinks she leaves the 10 pin, and then we get, whoop, tapper. We'll She'll take, take it. it. Oh, Absolutely. will she ever. Now 9-pin lead can expand to 19 here. Looks for the five-bagger. In a tight match. Can you believe this? Two seven tens? Well, I just show you the tap she gets, payback for the seven ten, and, mm. and here we go. Great shot. Right on target. That is just simply a bad break. And whiffs on the 10, so cost her in pin count. Two opens, two 7-10s for the youngster. And on the bench, Johnson takes a 7-pin lead, trying for a major championship. Check match. Danielle McEwen facing 7-10 on the first and sixth frames. And only eight pins down on the last 7-10 conversion attempt. Now, can Johnson take advantage? and close the door on the youngster. Well, you know, that's one of those things. The seven tens, you could check the racks. It could be a little off. And sometimes, you know, you just don't pay attention as, as much as you should because you're in the, you know, heat of the battle. Just go up 17. <laughs> Earlier today, Carolyn presenting Stephanie Johnson with Rookie of the Year Award. One trophy already for Stephanie. She'd like another one, a $20,000 check, and maybe player of the year, too. So this could be quite a day for the Johnson family with some big prize money and hardware for the trophy case. She's going to need a bigger trophy case. I tell you. She takes it all home today. Could be. That's what's at stake.
Turkey looks for the four-bagger. Expands the lead, almost had another 7-10. Just the seven standing here for Stephanie. I'm telling you, those shots look great on that left lane, and that's what I'm saying. Sometimes it could just be so, ever so slightly that, you know, these machines, they, they, they put these pins down, you know, shot after shot after shot after shot. If it's off just a little bit, yeah. it can leave that 7, that 10. There's a seven, covers. Scurble shots, scurble shots. Both ladies though, really executing to the best of their ability. I mean, they really are. They are throwing some really great shots, keeping it in the one three, and hoping the ball carries. Saw the percentage. Seven pin this time for McEwen. Still anyone's match. Could go right down to the last shot here today with so much on the line for Johnson. I mean, imagine what she could take home. And here's what would be going through your head on the next shot. After she converts this spare, you have three frames left. So you've gone light. Do I move? Do I just slow up do i get a little bit more i mean do you make a subtle move or do you make a dramatic move i mean we saw kelly Kulik grab another ball last week in the 10th frame at the u.s open that was dramatic that was a dramatic move what would you do me i would probably try to get my ball to read a little sooner move my eyes a little closer to me and just make sure i'm really firm through it up and knocks them all down. Big strike in the eighth. USBC provides numerous programs and services for bowlers in its efforts to build a future for the sport, including competitive leagues and tournaments for all ages, youth and collegiate bowling, as well as bowling instructional videos, coaching certification programs, and social interaction and event coverage. Visit bowl.com for more. Here at the home of the USBC. Arlington, Texas. Johnson in the eighth. Comes in high. Three six up. The spare to come. Stephanie looked like she got around this ball just a little bit more. See the axis rotation off her hand. Definitely got around that one a little bit more than she had been. Leaves the 3-6, actually 3-6 better than 3-6-10. Stephanie's much more behind the ball, kind of lets it roll off her hand and then slightly gets around it. That one just a little bit too much. Two. Does get two, does cover. And that was a disaster oh, for Fulton Crane. And his husband, Chris Johnson. Just a good foundation for him. Watching closely. A key factor for Stephanie in talking with her today is I want to stay present and in the moment, and I'm going to take my time. She said, if I do that, I feel like I can execute to the best of my ability. And she's definitely done that today. She's bowled so well. Yeah, good setup, good setup. Exactly what you wanted in the foundation ninth frame. Now the youngster steps back up here. Stephanie has come such a long way in the last three to five years. I bowled Team USA with her starting in 2008. She won the singles championship. I'll never forget it at the, at the Women's World. And then just worked on her game and has become an absolutely seasoned bowler. Nice frame. Needed that for a four-pin deficit. And does it. 
This is close. Again, gets this ball just a little bit right, but because of the angle, she gets to blow that seven pin right off the deck. And what I mean by angle is, even when Danielle and Stephanie get it a little bit right in the heads, it's still more straight than a Kelly Kulik. So they're able to bounce it off that spot down lane because they're so soft with their hand. Carry. It's it, Carry. Three in a row. Back to back to back, Jax. Now into the 10th. Up in the match. But Johnson on the bench will have her chance. It takes everything I have not to leave this booth right now, run over to my daughter, who's watching on the side, and say, these two ladies right here, this is what you should aspire to be. It's a great message. Don't do that yet. After the match. I will. We need you. Perfect shot again. So clutch to McEwen. Spans the lead. Now we'll try to fill out here one more, but even more pressure on Johnson. My hands, again, ice cold and sweating. And if, if, if the expiring young high school and collegiate bowlers aren't sitting watching this match and saying to themselves, that is what I want to be and take the tips of the breathing and executing shots. It, this is just another phenomenal finish. Was it ever for Danielle McEwen. 233, so now it's Stephanie Johnson needs a double. And seven to win. Smithfield, moment of the match. The big strike a moment ago for McEwen. Setting up Johnson, setting up our fantastic That's finish. That's what she needs. Got to have a strike here. And you heard what she said. This is what you prepared for. It's a must have. She won't get it. 7-10. Unbelievable, unbelievable bowling by these two ladies. You can see the tears in Danielle's eyes for one reason. Stephanie Johnson, fabulous, fabulous year. There's absolutely nothing more you can say. On the bench, Danielle McEwen has won. Here on the today, the PWBA Tour Championship goes to the youngster. Her first ever title. We're gonna hear from the winner. Very born, honey. 233, 205, Danielle McEwen's first ever WPWBA Tour title. John Harbuck, Strike 10 Entertainment President with the trophy. And Chad Murphy, USBC Executive Director with a check, $20,000. Carolyn and Liz Johnson, the 2015 PWBA Player of the Year. Congratulations to Liz and to Danielle today. And what a year it's been as the PWBA Tour has returned. Professional women's bowling is back in Green Bay. The win for Liz Johnson at the Queens, one of two majors for her. Let's recap a fantastic season. Professional women's bowling is back. And the future, Danielle McEwen, winner today. Congratulations to her winning the tour championship. For Carolyn Doran Ballard, Kathy Doran Lizzie, as well as the entire CBS Sports Network crew, I'm Dave Bryan saying so long.
for the PWA Tour Championship. Association of the United States Bowling Congress and Winkler Productions. It's been a presentation of CBS Sports Network, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Our next bowling telecast Sunday, November 8th at 1 Eastern for the Bowmore AMF U.S. Open from AMF Garland Lanes in Garland, Texas, here in the Metroplex.